Hello and welcome to the December episode of season two of the Living Legacy series from Of the I Sing, American Heritage Through Song. I am Audrey Johnson, founder, soloist, and program curator for Of the I Sing, and I am so excited to welcome you all here for our holiday episode this season. The mission of Of the I Sing is to bring American heritage to life through music, and a cornerstone of this mission is the support and championing of living American composers, because they are the living legacy of our nation's musical heritage and culture. I especially love featuring their settings of texts by American poets and authors, as this brings our national treasury of literature to the forefront as well. I believe deeply in our nation's music and poetry, and I am honored to be an ambassador of this music with the mission of bringing people together through the power of song. This series gives us all a chance to get to know these important and talented American artists, and I feature a different composer and one of his or her songs in each month's episode. Today, it is my joy to welcome back to the program Dr. Michael Patterson, one of my dear professors from Simpson College. For years, Dr. Patterson has had the tradition of writing a Christmas carol every season, a tradition that he learned from his professor of composition when he was a student at Simpson College, Dr. Sven Leckberg. Today's program will actually be featuring two of Dr. Michael Patterson's Christmas carols, as well as one of Sven Leckberg's Christmas carols from 1955. Recently retired from Simpson College, Dr. Michael Patterson was a beloved professor of music education, piano, composition, and music history. Dr. Michael Patterson is a frequently sought out composer with commissions for choral works, solo voice and piano, as well as saxophone. In addition, Dr. Michael Patterson has written two one-act operas for children, The Tale of Peter Rabbit and A Dream Deferred, The Saga of George Washington Carver, which was broadcast from Iowa Public Television. Both of these operas were created for Opera Iowa, the Des Moines Metro Opera's touring educational program. It is my delight and honor to welcome back to this program now, Dr. Michael Patterson. Dr. Patterson, welcome back to this program. It is so wonderful to have you. Well, thank you, Audrey. I appreciate your introduction and you having me on for a second time. It's, I'm very, uh, very flattered by that, so thank oh. you. Well, oh my goodness, absolutely. And you know, with such a busy time as this, I just am so appreciative that you found time in your in your schedule to to come back on and to to share things, you know, in in the spirit of the season. So, thank you and um, and welcome. So we are talking today a little bit more specifically um, about the music that you have written, about the way that you have approached music in the holiday season. And this is a, a special year for all of us um, that have been a part of the Simpson College music program. We are all preparing very safely um, at, to gather one for one more time um, to celebrate the legacy of Dr. Robert Larson, who we sadly lost this year um, at his uh, home. And we are so excited to, to come together and reminisce about all of the wonderful times that we have had at Simpson College during the holidays, but also you know, throughout the year, all of the wonderful things that, that he has taught us and that his mentors and, and yours, Dr. Patterson, the Leckbergs also had imparted and the impressions that they have made on so many people that are continuing to influence us and to, to benefit us all today as, as musicians. And then um, we in turn put out that music for others. So it's a beautiful time of remembrance, of gratitude, and of celebration. So if I could um, ask you to take us down memory lane with you a little bit here, uh, remind us, because you were one of those uh, wonderful professors at Simpson who also was an alum of the college. And so I would love for you to take us back a little bit. Could you just uh, give us a little taste of what it was like as a student at Simpson under the tutelage of the Leckbergs? Oh yes, I'd be just pleased to remember that. I want to say there's so many different levels this particular year that we can feel really good about celebrating a little bit more than last year when we just were not doing anything with with our neighbors at all. So just beginning there, like you know, people everywhere are thrilled to do some semblance of gathering anyway this year. So and then on top of that, we're we're trying to have a, a celebration here of the Lecper Christmas party, which was held at Dr. Larson's house for oh, over 40 years, but before that was held at the Lechbergs for almost 40 years too. So oh. 
the, this particular party has an 80 year tradition dating back to 1940. And uh, so and it began at a, oddly a time uh, for the college, you know, that was the one winter before World War II began. And the dynamics of the college changed greatly then because there were hardly any men left on campus. <laughs> Yeah. The, all of the, the all of the 18 year old to 20 year old men, you know, were have gone on would have gone off to war. There were not very many men on campus. So the first year, which would have been 1940, was probably the last time that it was a quote normal uh, Christmas at, on the campus before we had four years of very strange uh, on the campus. Yes. But anyway, it was a, a gathering initially of a a few, or just a few people at Mrs. Lickberg, they were newly married. And uh, they thought that it, Mrs. Lickberg thought, being the gracious host that she was, just a gracious host, that it would be nice to have some of the students come out. But first of all, wouldn't it be nice to do some caroling? Mm -hmm. And so they did some caroling and Dr. Lickberg had called up, I just saw a picture of this the other day, of a, of a, a horse drawn sled on the town square downtown, which is what they arranged for to come to their home. And then they went around town on this horse drawn sled, which was like a big wagon with with sleds under it and horses in front. But uh, Dr. Lecker tells the story much better than myself, but they had not cleaned the wagon out, shall we say, completely from its uh -huh. previous responsibilities. And so <laughs> there was some there's some residue left over to remind people what the purpose of the wagon really was. So uh -huh. anyway, <laughs> but otherwise they did their caroling with their few instruments and then they stopped at the house again at the end and Mrs. Leckberg said, wouldn't you all like to come in? And so she went in and, and of course found some lovely things to serve people. And that was the beginning of the tradition of the Leckberg party, which grew to be a really program party mm -hmm. so that there are certain things that happened at certain times and it basically takes care of itself once it starts to go and it's all then intermingled with christmas carols and one of the i don't know if you've seen it, elizabeth niemeyer has put up a wonderful uh, uh statement about this online i don't know if you've seen it or not audrey oh no i haven't but, we'll add that but yeah it's it, she says that and rightly so you know four part singing for carols is something that people used to take for granted, but you can't anymore. That's right. And at this party, of course, there's a whole room full of people that can sing all those carols. And so suddenly something that we took for granted makes it even more special that people are able to sing those carols as they were intended to be sung. So, and then of course we now with the parties have, we're fortunate enough to have a wonderful audio tape of Dr. Leckberg improvising Jingle Bells, which was, always a remarkable treat because he we heard him do that every year live of course at the party and uh one thing that we didn't do during the party that we sort of have done in the last 10 or 15 years because i thought that we should uh i would do a group of leckberg carols with students and then i would put modulations in between because they're fairly short so we would glue them together four or five carols and then people could hear some of these wonderful carols because before we started to work on that book, you know, people did not know any of the carols except for the years that they had been at school. Mm -hmm. And so it, there was a, a great danger that some of those Leckberg carols were just going to disappear. I mean, there were like one or two or three copies of some of those things from the early 40s. Sure. So that was one of the things that I was concerned about in trying to rescue these carols. So oh, then we would go on later and there would be a Santa Lucia appearance. And there would be, of course, there would be skits and pieces, of original music by students. Uh, I, the students actually used to write a lot more music that was included. Uh, oh. Not saying that it was always great, but there would, be, <laughs> there would be, I know that I converted four or five counterpoint assignments into a particular, that was profound, of course. But nevertheless, there was some of that that did go on. And then White Christmas and A Holy Night. And then uh, there would be the Santa Lucia with the presentation. There would be a senior girl that would be Santa Lucia and then lead everyone to coffee and donuts. And then Dr. Larson would read one of my favorite things at Christmas was the, the juggler, uh, the yes. little juggler, 
by Anatole France, which I dearly love. So those are just some of the things that happened at the party, which initially was called the Lechberg party, but it sort of morphed into the, the Lechberg Larson party, which then for the last 40 years, he maintained those traditions and added a few of his own at the, at the house. So yes. that's sort of in a nutshell, what happened at the party, but if you would be very, maybe you wouldn't be surprised the number of students that this was one of the most important things to them that happened during their time at the college. So oh, it's yeah. nothing to be minimized in the memory bank of students that this is this was a, a, a really a treasured moment that happened once every year they were they were here. So, well, that's absolutely true. And you know, Simpson College really you you come away from that as a music major with such a tremendous musical background and musical education, which you know, is, is not easily earned. It's an extremely rigorous program as well it should be. And so I feel this party really gave us all a chance. It was just always my feeling to just come together and, you know, to set that hard work aside for a moment, to replenish and, and to really come together with one another because we were all going through the trenches of this. And, you know, our, yeah. you as, as one of the, the wonderful faculty members um, that I had the honor of, of having, um, you know, you, you, were, you challenged us and made sure that we were becoming the best musicians that we possibly could. And so to come together in this special way just really Really was so vitally important to, uh, to to knowing that you all supported us as people as well and really believed in us and that 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 was why you know you were you were all so uh, you know challenged us during during the rest of the year but it's wonderful to hear from you dr. Patterson all of these wonderful memories that I myself as someone who came along later as you know I, I never experienced the Leckberg party at the Leckbergs it was I was at Dr. Larson's house and so for me it was always the recording of Jingle Bells of Dr. Leckberg it was never the real thing but Larson had that way of keeping it alive um, and certainly the four part carols and absolutely the um, the Santa Lucia um, tradition of of the Swedish tradition during Christmas time where I, I believe it's from the it's the oldest daughter in the house typically right we'll get up early we'll wear the yes. crown of real lit candles and we'll then welcome the family for for the donuts and and the hot beverages and at simpson that tradition was that yes it was one senior girl who was selected completely in secret she was you know summoned to dr larson's office in in secret and was told about a week prior that she would be the one and and i i think it was you know the next to the last carol that was being sung she needed to sneak upstairs and only then could she gesture to a friend she was not to tell anyone beforehand that she had been been the one chosen and that they would go upstairs and that person would help her put the candles on her head and put on mrs leckberg's dressing gown and then she would come down the stairs as the beautiful um Santa Lucia song was being sung, and I have to say, I was I was the senior girl my year. I thought that you were, Audrey. Yes, I have a picture of that actually <laughs> here. Um, but it was truly, you know, I mean, of course, being cast in the operas and all of those different things were were so important and, and made one feel as though you know they were really making progress and and you know doing everything they needed to do within the department professionally and musically. But that was an honor that remains just in a very deeply cherished part of my heart of hearts i have to say i will never ever forget that so good um, it's a wonderful yes it, it's just um it was just one of the many wonderful traditions that are um in housed within this this beautiful um celebration and so when we, i know that this year when we gather we will all you know be reminiscing about dr larson thinking about the ways in which he is still with us as we continue to to make music. And so, Dr. Patterson, it, it sounds as though your tradition of an annual Christmas carol came from Dr. Leckberg. Is that true? It's true. It was just, I, I remember those years that I was at, of course, I took piano lessons from Dr. Leckberg. Yes. And so every piano lesson was a, a real treat because he was always at the piano, he would play things and often they were improvised, even if they were an improvisation on the piece I was working on to make a point. And so it was always just a, it, every lesson was like a composition lesson as well as a piano lesson. Wow. But I, I remember him premiering the, the new carols at his home and I just thought it was so magic. So I just thought I would give my, you know, try my hand at it. And, and so, yes, uh, Believe me, I think of him every time that I write a measure of music, always, so. 
That's beautiful. Well, and certainly what I'm so excited to present for everyone today is kind of a juxtapositional um, performance of one of the Lechberg carols, which I will show you all now. So one thing that Dr. Patterson has done, which is just a wonderful way to continue to preserve the legacy. This is the Lechberg Christmas Songbook, and it is a wonderful collection of all of the carols. And it's beautiful because it really is, see if I can try and show you, um, we'll put pictures if we can't, but um, it really is his writing there. You know, this is not, they've not been entered into the computer. They're very legible, but we get the, just that sense of, of Dr. Lechberg himself coming across the page and it is just so beautiful. And the accompanying um, recording includes not only recordings of the songs themselves, but also of the, the jingle bells and, and some other really special things for, for the Simpson College alumni. But honestly, anyone who is a music lover and, and a music lover during Christmas, this would make a beautiful addition to to the musical celebrations that you have within your home. So um, we will put at the end how you can get a hold of this volume. It's through the Des Moines Metro Opera and they are so lovely to work with and very easy to um, to order from. So we'll, we'll put that in the notes there. But uh, I will be singing one of Dr. Leckberg's pieces from 1955. And then I will be singing one of Dr. Patterson's pieces. It's actually from last year, but it was never Perform. So this is technically the premiere of the 2020 um, anthem carol from Dr. Patterson as well as um, a carol from Dr. Leckberg from 1955.
Well, Dr. Patterson, thank you so much for making it possible to sing this this Lechberg music that you have so lovingly put together, as well as a chance to premiere your carol from last year it's so lovely to hear musically the influences that you uh, that you received from him and the way that his legacy is living on through you well audrey i'm just thrilled always to hear people performing dr lechberg's music and i'd like to point out in that book you know the illustration looks so interesting and unique on the on the cover yes. and that's just the tip of the iceberg it's those illustrations were from the kitchen cupboards in the Lechberg home. Oh. And so I, all the cupboards had, they were folk, Swedish folk art. And I, I'm sure that Barb, who became a nationally known artist, is really the one that probably did that. But it could have been a family project too. But all of the kitchen cupboards were painted the way that that uh, that book is mm -hmm. and so and if you and then inside the book of course are wonderful photographs of the Leckbergs and the Leckberg parties and you'll notice that some of those carols are different colors in there that's because that's the way they were mailed out those were the original co covers <laughs> those they came out on pieces of uh oak tag it was like oak tag a stiffer cardboard that was then printed downtown at the record herald and uh, by Ann Larson's father, Chuck Ogan down there, would print these things up and then they would order hundreds and then they would be given to the students and or they would be mailed out. But they were sometimes ivory or white or green or golden or something. So those the pages in the books, I tried to replicate the, the colors as well as the pictures and then some of the art in there that you could find in the house. So I wanted to make it all sort of like a trip to the Lakeburg, so. Yes, oh, you did beautifully. Those are lovely touches. And again, for those of us that never knew the Lechbergs personally, that really means, it means a lot. So thank you for, for being such a yeah. loving curator of this material for us. We really do appreciate it, yes. Well, so talk to us a little bit about your personal approach as you annually write a Christmas Carol, you know, how, how that affects you, what thing, what sentiments during the year perhaps are reflected, anything that you'd like to share about that particular process? Well, you know, of course I, I have two, two of my favorite Carol composers are Sven Lechberg. And then I don't know if you're familiar with the, with the Christmas music of Alfred Burt, but he was a remarkable composer. He was a, uh, the son of a preacher Initially, I think in Wisconsin, they moved to then to Pennsylvania, but uh, the words initially were written by his father, the preacher, and then later by a family friend, and then Alfred Burt set the music. And this happened all the way through high school. The war interrupted, and he went off to war. So Alfred Burt then, after he, he went to war, and I think he was a performing musician. I'm not sure if he went overseas or if he performed in this country, but he made a lot of musical connections. And a lot of his uh, friends and fellow musicians, uh, he was able to, because of opportunities and their willingness, to make studio recordings of, of his carols. Mm -hmm. uh, the only unfortunate thing about Alfred Burt, bless his heart, is that he became very ill as a young man <clears throat> and passed away at a very young age. Mm -hmm. So there's a finite number of the Alfred Burt carols. There's probably, I think, like a dozen and a half, something like that. There are beautiful things. And G. Shermer, Hal Leonard, and uh, Shawnee Press have wonderful collections of Alfred Burt carols. <coughs> but these have been, the, the Lechberg carols and the Burt carols are always in the back of my mind as a young person. So as I'm writing Christmas carols now, I'm always thinking about those two composers because there's so many attributes in their music. But I am also thinking about the people that are going to be looking at these pieces and listening. <coughs> and pardon me. Oh, it's okay. And uh, so as tempted as I might be, I try and keep the range down so that it might be enjoyed by many people and not just professionals. And the same with, even though I think most of the piano accompaniments are also not too onerous so the people are able to enjoy sure. using this music that's my goal so 
I do the text as well as the as the the, the music. It is affected by the year. Uh, I will say that uh, in 1990, I there was uh, we had the Gulf War beginnings, and so I mentioned something along those lines. Mm -hmm. And in the last few years with the pandemic, I sort of mentioned the fact that we had not been getting together as much. And so this carol celebrates our getting together this year and laments it last year. I wrote, uh, the first carol is from 1980. And then I took, did not write a carol. I was in the public schools and then I went to graduate school. I resumed the carols in 1986 and have done them every, ever since. So there's all those carols, I think that means 38. And then there's two at the end of the book. I wrote one for the Indianola Music Club. It's, it's a silly little piece about, uh, they wanted me to come and talk about my Christmas carols. And it was in the middle of October, September in Harvest. So I wrote, it was nine weeks before Christmas. So I wrote a pre-Christmas carol for them. That's in sort of an appendix for this book. And then I remember, I don't know if you were here when we did, it's Guido, our hero at Christmas in sight singing. I did. That's at the tail end of the book. Okay. So I have, I have one of those sight singing pieces about, about Guido Durezzo, Solfege and other Christmas heroes. So those are the, <laughs> that makes 40 in the book in the book so oh, that's lovely and dr patterson go ahead and show uh will you show everyone this volume sure. so this is also available from des moines metro opera yes and it's just again it's another beautiful example of the way that you dr patterson have continued the tradition um, of preserving the these carols so you've did, done an absolutely lovely job with the leckberg collection and I, we are so glad that you have done this for your own as well um, because you know so many of us remember you so dearly and remember those those carols every year and so it's a wonderful way to to make that a part of our of our christmas collection so let's close we will we will close the entire uh interview today i will actually be doing um a a, a re uh, presentation of the 2019 carol when we actually were traveling around from place to place so we can you know be um, be able to have a, a newfound and deeper appreciation for being able to do that again this year. But before we close with that, Carol, um, Dr. Patterson, just to, to kind of oh, broaden the, the aperture of our focus here just a little bit, could you just give us any words of reflection for yourself personally on the way that music plays that crucial role for you during this holiday season, during, during the time of Christmas? Well, I... Christmas is sort of one of those, it's really the most remarkable season because music is so integrally linked to it. I always consider it is a gift to musicians. The season itself is a gift to musicians because we have an opportunity to share with people that love Christmas music and may not be comfortable themselves in recreating it every year. So I consider it a gift that we have been given to share Christmas with people who are not so comfortable in performing or certainly in, in composing music. So I just consider it an opportunity that I've always been very grateful for and like to share at Christmas time with people. So, and when I was doing this book, I was, I just wanted an opportunity for uh, something to be uh, uh, also for musicians to be able to use. It's, it's, we're not always, it's, there's a lot of beautiful music this time of year, but some of it is not always easy to to get a hold of and and do quickly and with ease to perform and so many things in in this book and the electric book can either be performed as they are or sort of welded together as a group of them and mm -hmm. because sometimes christmas music that's appropriate for certainly for church musicians is kind of hard to come by without singing arias from messiah or something like that which is not always fun at nine o'clock on sunday morning so these are a little bit more modest and provide an opportunity to share some holiday music with, with friends. Oh, absolutely. But, you know, they are no less of, of a caliber than, you know, than any of those classics, which is what is so lovely about having these compositions uh, to choose from. So. Thank you. 
They, oh, absolutely. And we are just, we're so grateful for, for the gift of you, for what you impart to us from those that, that you remember that had an impression on you and for, for everything that you personally continue to give us as we all um, oh, thank continue you. to use music and, and celebrate it during this season. So, oh, absolutely. It was just my absolute pleasure and cannot wait to see you soon. I can't the... wait to see you, Audrey. Yes. <laughs> All righty. Well, thank you once again for your time and, and your delightful presence today. As always, it's a pleasure. And for those of you watching, this has been the Living Legacy series, and we sure hope you've enjoyed it. While traveling round from place to place in town this wintry night, I feel the warmth, the cold it is from all the Christmas lights. The echoes of sounds are magnified, for frigid is the air. We see the symbols everywhere. They make us all aware That Christmas has come home again To those who seek it out Christmas has come home again A roar and give a shout The time is right, the nights are cold The darkness lasts so long the days are short, the needs are great. Rise up and sing on strong. Christmas has come home again. The old now joy.